Hello you lovely lot and welcome to a brand new video. My name is Katie and today we're going to be taking a look at the Schmenke Academy Gouache. If you're new here and you're interested in these kinds of videos, I have got a gouache playlist that I think you're really going to enjoy, so why not check that out after this video is finished. Anyway, shameless plug aside, let's talk about these paints. I got them from Jackson's, I'd say perhaps back in November, and I think I featured them on a bit of an art haul video that I just showed a bunch of stuff on and said I'd return to. Well, I am returning to them. The Schmincke Academy Gouache is a five pack. There are three colours in there. We have a primary yellow, primary magenta, primary cyan, a white opaque and a deep black. They're 20 milliliter tubes and on the Jackson's website at the moment, they are a eye watering £17.80. I'm pretty sure I didn't pay that much. I think there must have been some sort of sale on at the time. But yeah, £17.80 for five colours. So how will they stand up? Can I create a nice painting with them? And how's that going to turn out? I'd just like to make a little highlight as well. My lovely friend Emma had sent me some literally around the same time I'd ordered these and she'd made a little palette for me. It's quite interesting to see how different they are reactivating from a solid point. I'll be honest, I think you're really going to have to let the water stand in there for a while to get quite a lot of pigment payoff, but I think they'll be all right with some time. I didn't go back to them though because I wanted to get straight in to painting this dragon. As per, I'm using the Frisk watercolour paper. It's 300 GSM and it's a hot press. For me personally, I like to use gouache on a relatively smooth surface because I love the matte qualities and I don't want to be fighting against the paper. And the theme for this dragon, I guess I went with a bit of a nebula theme, a bit of a creation of all stars kind of theme here. So big massive clouds, big black void and lots of twinkly bits in there. I started off with the background and I used the primary cyan, the magenta and a touch of the deep black which you'll have seen me mix up on my palette. Of course we only have five tubes of paint to work with so let's hope they can mix all the colours that I want for this picture. It was quite easy to find the sweet spot for the consistency to paint with these so I was quite happy at that and I should hope they would be as well for the price they are. I managed to mix quite a nice salmony pink colour for the background, I'm not sure exactly why I went for that and I was quite happy to report that the white paint was a good opaque white paint and I do tend to find when I try out these gouache sets the 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 opacity of the white really does, it's a bit of a deal breaker to be honest. I don't even mind if it's a slightly off white because the Royal and Langnickel set, which cost me less than five pounds, it did have a slightly off white in there. However, it was beautifully opaque and did the job. So I would hope the Schmincke ones would be the same and I'm happy to report that they did. Of course, I mean, I'm referring back to the swatches now. The blues do tend to not be quite as opaque and I think I'm just going to have to accept that as a thing with gouache. I guess it's quite a tricky pigment to, I don't know, make opaque. <laughs> oh gosh, that rhymed. I added a touch more magenta to that salmon pink colour to create a more softer pink for the clouds and yeah it does look a little bit streaky in places, some areas I did go over more than once and that is again something that's been pretty much standard throughout all of the pictures here. For the base layer of the dragon I got some of that cyan blue and just added a smidgen of that yellow in there just so it was sort of borderline teal but not quite. I wanted to be quite a nice contrast between the dragon and the background and I really wanted it to stand out as well against that black sky, well near black sky. I also kept the tone of the clouds, the big circle in the background and the dragon's body relatively similar because I wanted things to stand out with the details I applied on there afterwards. Once I'd put the base layer down for the dragon's body I 
didn't really need to go over it again. That white paint, and there was quite a lot in there with that blue, well, that blue and yellow combination. I, I didn't need to go over it again. Yeah, there's a couple of streaky bits, but that's just how it works sometimes. But that's nothing that the detailing can't cover over and disguise. The majority of brushes I use, I guess I should mention that, are the Artful ones and I have been looking for something similar so if you don't want to buy from Artful I will be checking out some new brushes soon because I do need to update some of my brushes and I have found some that might compare to the Artful ones and that will be in a video maybe within a couple of weeks or so. I like the Artful brushes, I guess they are a multimedia paint brush and I think they work great for watercolours and they also work really good for gouache. I don't want to use them for acrylics because I don't look after my brushes well enough to ensure that all the paint's been removed and as you know with acrylics it kind of just stays there forever. And I guess to a certain extent the same can apply for the acrylic gouache that you can get. I tend to try and use different brushes for that just purely because I don't want to ruin my favourite ones. For me, using a brush that's too soft just won't do for gouache. You need something with a good snap to it so it can move that paint around on the paper. Now, obviously, if you're going to use gouache as a watercolour, that's a different story altogether. And unfortunately, that's not really a technique I like to use. However, that did work out quite well for the Shinhan Pass watercolour gouache hybrid paints, which hopefully you'll have checked out. In that video I'd use them as a watercolour and I do plan to make a dragon and do an outright gouache painting with them. I just need to collect a couple more colours which again that will be something I'll do in the next couple of weeks. But this is not a video about the Shinhan Pass gouache, this is about the Schmincke Academy. And I shall continue to talk about that again now. So it's obviously detailing time and I found that it handled really nicely for just the small little specks of paint that I had for the base layer scales. There isn't any colour show through from the layer beneath which again it just goes to show that the opacity of that white is really good just for making sure that your blue paints have, have got a bit more to them. I kind of mixed up a bit of an ultramarine colour because there isn't one in this very small set here and again I just added a little touch of magenta in there and that just brought it to a more ultramarine level. The paint itself is really nice to work with, the consistency is great, I didn't feel like I was adding more paint and more water just to get the right consistency, it didn't take long and the colour payoff's really good. I do think though the price point, and again it all depends on how you intend to use these paints, I think if you're a beginner you do not need to spend this amount of money on gouache. I'll admit the colour choices in there do create a lot of possibilities for mixing your own colours. I didn't feel like there was any muddiness or anything by over mixing pigments. So yeah, I, I was quite pleased with that. However, I have demonstrated in previous videos, you really do not need to spend a lot of money to learn gouache. And as well, yes, these do boast a high light fast rating. There's also pigment information in there as well for those of you who obviously find that important but for me these don't go up on a wall if they were to I'd probably get them printed and they'd obviously last as long as the ink for the prints unless you really have got the budget to do that I probably wouldn't recommend these for sketchbook work either of course if you do enjoy painting with these then that's entirely your preference but for something where those light fast properties aren't really going to be put to the test, again a cheaper alternative is probably more suitable. A couple of things worth noting as well, this was not painted all in one session, I do have a job so I, I work on this in the mornings and then do my job and then pick it up the following day and obviously the paint dries in the palette. With most of the gouaches, bar the acrylic gouaches because obviously they're acrylic based, I found these the hardest to reactivate. When I did try and reactivate them in my mixing palette, I found it took quite a long time. I also found it was quite difficult to find that consistency that I like painting with. It's not impossible, but it does take quite a while. So 
Again, I suppose if you're going to use these like a watercolour, that's not really going to be a huge issue. However, if you want to use them thick like I do, you are best using them straight out of the tube. As a painting experience though, I mean, they are lovely to work with. Again, the colours mixed great, the consistency was easy to find once it was squeezed fresh out the tube, and I can't grumble there. I love the opacity of the white, I really do feel that it lends itself well to adjusting the opacity of the other pigments there. And I found it was really good for adding those highlighted areas where perhaps I probably should have left it clear on the page, but it was easily remedied there. I think these are great for an upgrade, but again, referring back to beginners, there are loads of cheaper ones. Go for the Royal Langnickel, just so you can get your head around this medium. I actually think I might do a bit of a recap video, just going through all of the dragons I've done so far. I've got about six videos which again if you just want a quick reference guide just to look at the swatches as well as the final results that's great but if you want a more longer form video i definitely recommend you check out the playlist now again i really did enjoy using these paints however i don't think i'd buy them again especially at the price they are at the moment 17 pounds 80 for just five paints is quite steep for me i'd rather actually spend that amount and perhaps have more colours. The Pebio Gouache set for example it cost me uh, under seven pounds I can't think off the top of my head how much it was and you get 12 good colours to work with there. If you want to practice your colour theory then maybe the Royal and Langnickel where you've only got six paints to work with is also a good alternative there. These paints would be great for commissions though, or personal works that you want on your walls. Again, just referring back to those light fast qualities. I'm not saying that these are bad paints though, they are beautiful to paint with. I enjoyed the experience of it. Again, you only need five colours to create all these different colours and different tones. But, oh, £17.80, oh it is eye watering, I definitely didn't pay that much at the time, I think they might have been perhaps 20% off, I think Jackson's might have had one of those wonderful sales on, I even think maybe I could have got it off Amazon, if you are going to get them, shop around, try and find the cheapest price you can. And to be honest, I kind of advise that all the time with most of the art materials, the Knicker poster colours which kind of started this series off. They go for so much money on Amazon, but every now and then you'll see them for quite a good price. And I do recommend holding on and paying the cheapest price you can. Also, eBay is a great option too. I've picked up many good art supplies on there for a fraction of the price. So, you know, what somebody else doesn't want could be very, very, very beneficial to you. Anyway, I feel like I've been very waffly in this video, but I hope that hasn't put you off and you've all made it to now. I do hope that you have found this video slash review quite useful and I hope you've enjoyed the painting process. Let me know down below and stick a little dragon in the comments if you've made it this far. I'll pop the gouache playlist on screen now so why not give that a click just in case you want a recap. But in the meantime you lovely lot I want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all soon. Bye!